Hello, Cancer friends. I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my Cancer September 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. This is a mega month for Cancer. I'm calling the theme of this month Smashing Limits, and there are several areas of your life where this is especially applicable to, and we will build up to all of that. It is my intention to give you all of the things, the layers that weave together the potentials of your month and beyond to help you understand the astrological climate so that you can be prepared and that you can activate the potentials because of your awareness and you can look out for any pitfalls that may come from the other types of energies that are rolling through. This is for you if Cancer is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Cancer placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're very late degree Cancer friends, so birthdays like July 15th through the rest of the sign, or Cancer degrees 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Leo report, as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. So I'm going to work in order of the most quick moving uh, transits that will definitely, you will be feeling these. And noticing them and can use them actively but they're kind of they blow through and then I'll be building up to the transits that are there for longer and then talk about the implications to finally culminate in this amazing Pisces eclipse which is in the best possible angle for you which is one of the things that is going to one of the major things that's going to help you to smash limits not only now but into 2027 so we will build up to that all right, so I am going to work on the chart. Podcast listeners, I'm putting the chart as the thumbnail if you want to have a peeky. Um, YouTube friends, I will show you the things visually that I'm talking about as we go through them. So when we are in September, this is the Virgo time of the year. So Mercury will get into Virgo. Vesta is there. The sun is there. Star goddess Astraea is there. And on September 2nd, the 11 degree new moon in Virgo is also there. So a tremendous amount of energy with lots of personalities in the form of the planets bringing lots of potentials to your third house, which we'll talk about what that means, and to the energy of Virgo. So Virgo is representing discipline and systems and efficiency. It rules all those areas in your life where you need to do things every day, habitual things like taking your supplements or, you know, going for a walk or the daily grind of what you have to do for yourself and your family. Practices like yoga and meditation and things that have some sort of habituation to them. Your office or your workspace, you know, because you go there regularly, even your home space, not because Virgo rules the home, but because Virgo rules the day to day. So you're in for a fresh new revamp of your schedule. There is going to be quite a bit of difference between what we're stepping out of, which was all this energy in Leo. So we had a Leo party, fire party leading up to now, and you know, it could have been a little bit of a fun frenzy. So now we're getting back to basics, back to work, back to the schedule, and hopefully the Leo fun and the Leo inspiration will inspire you to create new ways that your daily experience can be great. This is a fantastic time to focus on wellness and new or going back to old ways of doing just things that are good for you every day. Health habits, checkups, blood work, diagnostics, all of that is ruled by Virgo. Pets and animals, getting some solutions to some things that your pets need, even getting a new, giving a new animal a forever home. And there are some dates that are especially good for all of this, September 12th through October 7th. These are the dates that are free and clear from the personal planet retrogrades. Personal planets are Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And when those planets go retrograde or the time right before or after they are going or, or have been retrograde, those are the shadow periods, they carry a different energy than when none of that is happening. Okay, so it's really important to um, differentiate between these energies because you will definitely, definitely feel them. And what's very significant about October 7th is that we will descend into Mars retrograde, which only happens every two years. And it is a long transit from beginning to end with the shadow periods. So this is going to be affecting us well into 2025. And then during the time of that Mars retrograde, we'll have more Mercury retrograde, we'll have Venus retrograde, um, you know, which also doesn't happen as often. So this is all, this is just a retrograde time we're going into, and it's nothing to be scared of. I personally love retrogrades in many, many ways. I've become 
um, I've really, really focused on this and it's one of my areas of expertise. In fact, I focus on this a lot in my book, Planetology, if you're interested in those kind of things, but I'll be giving you tidbits, you know, through the horoscopes as we move along this period. But what's important to know about this period of time is that it's not that, okay? So a quick, um, quick showing of what the difference is so that you can align your energies. If you understand the energy, then you can see how the things in your life can apply. Okay, there you are on the beach. In this time of September 12th through October 7th, the tides are going out. Okay, so there's there's more openness, more beach for you to run and play on. The, you know, the water isn't cr cramping up on the beach. You're, you're free, everything's forward, moving forward. If you want to put a boat out to sea, the tides will take it out. You won't be paddling against the, the tide coming in. Your message in a bottle will go far and wide. And that is energetically equivalent to anything that you want to put into motion that you want to be in effect for a long time to come. Not all the things we do in life are intended to be for a long time to come. But when we have those things, using dates like this can be really beneficial because when we do something important, it's a birth date for that thing and it incorporates the energetics of that time. So when you have this outward going tide and you do a launch or you do a new job or a big move or a big sale, a big new chapter, an engagement, a wedding, you know, something really grand and something really important that you want to last a long time, business deals, investments, you know, writing up anything, you know, publishing, anything. This is fantastic energy for that. And it's also good for diagnostics, um, surgeries. Now I will say planning a surgery date is way more complicated than I could do in a general horoscope. But in general, you don't have the mischief that comes with the personal planet retrogrades in September 12th through October 7th timeframe. So things like that if it happens to coordinate, if you're in an emergency and you need a surgery, don't put it off to wait for this because, you know, if it's time sensitive, just do what you have to do. But if it's something that you can align, if it's something voluntary, this period of time is going to be your best thing. Even for like n brand new um, wardrobe, which we'll, we'll get to all of that. New stuff. This is your time. Now what happens when October 7th comes, and I'll just give you a sneak peek into this even though it's not happening this month per se is that the tides start to come in. Okay, the beach gets smaller, it's more cramped, you're kind of, you know, you gotta, you gotta go inward, basically. And that's what retrogrades do. They go inward and backward, and they're fantastic for so, so many things. But if you try to throw something out on the waves, it will come back to you. And some things are great like that, like doing, I, one time I started a business that I intended to be short-term um, during the retrogrades, and it was short-term, and what happened when I was done with that was YouTube, <laughs> which I've been doing for a very long time, which really brought my astrology work you know, out into the world, which dominated everything since. So, but at the time, that business that I started then, it was a transition. It was me just kind of bridging a gap of, of focus. And it was perfect because it did its thing. It came to an end. It was a perfect segue. So the retrogrades can be great for things like that, short-term things, experimenting, you know, but they are very mischievous as far as appliances and communication breaking down. And this period of time in September 12th through October 7th is not that. See, so it's everything that's not that. So it's much easier to communicate. It's much easier to plan for the future, although the retrogrades will call everything into question when they happen, you know. So it, it's just this very big line of differentiation here. So the days up until September 12th are us still getting out of the web of the previous Mercury retrograde. But it's pretty clear, you know, even in the days before the 12th, it's just that's the official day that it's clear. Okay, so now specifically for cancer, all of this Virgo discipline goes, moves through the third house of Gemini and writing and social interactions and vehicles and transportation. So you're probably gonna be really busy whenever there's a lot of energy in the third house, you're running all over the place, you're, you know, um, interacting with a lot of people, you're in many cases burning the candle at both ends, you know, so you will see an uptick in your busyness. You'll be driving around, um, maybe long distance travel, but this mostly rules short distance travel, but you do have a long distance travel, epic long distance travel thing happening this month too. So actually both of those will be accentuated. 
So all of that is happening and all of that is very exciting. Now, as the month goes on, Oh, and by the way, the um, earthy planets work really well for cancer because they hold the flow of cancer. Earth and water go well together. So all of these transits are making a nice angle for you. Everyone can get a kiss and use that new moon in Virgo to make their wishes, especially around Virgo things that we've been talking about. But those of you who are in the days closest to around July 1st, you'll get the biggest kiss. So we'll extend it out like June 26th through July 6th, but the days around, you know, as you get closer to the first, the more of a kiss you get from there. Okay, so as the planets move out of Virgo, they join these Venus, Lilith, Juno, South Node in Libra. So this is ushering in the time where relationships are going to be a major, major focus. Lots of opportunities for new relationships, people coming back from the past, um, chances to heal, and to restore and to expand relationships, getting help from other people, getting to accord with places where there were conflict, and um, in some cases, conflict coming up because there is stuff under the surface that needs to be gotten into accord. Now, for Cancer, this makes a square, 90 degree angle, and that's a point of pressure. I know a lot of people get nervous when I talk about squares. Sometimes they're annoying, for sure. But these are not, these are fast moving planets, so any nuisance that comes through. It blows, it blows through quickly. And sometimes it's just a pressure point. Like let's say you got a new house and there's stuff that you wanna do, building furniture or getting some stuff done. Maybe you feel the pressure on before the temperatures change or something if you live in a colder climate to get some work done. You know, So that could be a good pressure, like okay, you've been kind of lollygagging and now the pressure's on to focus on your home and family because that is where the leap replacements move for cancer. And so you will be feeling a lot of pressure in the family sector, um, for better or worse. There could be family conflicts. There could be just extra busyness that has to be you know, tended to. You might need the Virgo energies to get you a new system to make everything work. Um, it could be unresolved things within the family unit. Or like I said, it could just be something great that you need to stay focused and push through. But fortunately, those Virgo energies can help you stay focused and can help you be disciplined and can help you, most importantly, use this time, September 12th through October 7th, because if you're trying to get something done around your house, and many Cancers are going to be trying to get things done around their house, either you're going to want to move or you're trying to improve things in your home, you want to use this window because once we start to get into the Mars retrograde, many people are going to start to lose their ambitions and many roadblocks to moving forward are going to come about. And that's not just for you. In this case, this can be most importantly for the people who you're trying to hire to do the work in your house. So you will see this, you know, people will be ghosting you right and left, not showing up for work, um, you know, have other things to do, weird delays of ordering stuff. So if you can blow through and kind of get things done in this window, you're going to have much more uh, flow and ease and quicker pulling things together for your home projects. And all of that energy, although we're in September and this is for September and it will absolutely be true then, it will also linger into October. So this, this storyline of the focus on the home and the relationships is, you know, is definitely going to be spreading out beyond this month. Okay, so the next time frame that we have to look at in the next important transit is that Mars is about to go into your sign. And not only is it going to go into your sign, it's going to be there for a long, long time or very close because the whole Mars retrograde will be only popping into the early degrees of Leo and then spending the majority of the time in Cancer. So you will have an inordinate amount of time with Mars in your sign. Usually it blows through in two months and now it's going to be lingering for you know, at least maybe nine months nearby, um, or eight, seven, at least seven very strongly. So yeah, so this is a big deal. So what does it mean? This means that the energy of home and family, which is the cancer energy, you know all about this, right? Is going to have a lot of things going on. There's going to be a lot of under the cover stuff that has to be dealt with. Childhood things, childhood patterns, you may become very aware, much more aware um, than before of the ways that the way you felt as a kid are echoing into your life now and that the people that are around you are reflecting that state of unresolved 
stuff. So this is one of the best possible times for inner work and dealing with any anger or resentment or gallbladder liver channel or organ issues. And this is also a time to really, really redo how you use your energy. Are you a procrastinator? Well, this is a time where you can get to the bottom of that. There are tools actually even like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, that can actually even help you get through blocks. Hypnosis, that EFT, there are so many, even EMDR. There are many tools that you can use that can help you get past something as kind of, you know, ubiquitously a problem for people as, as that, you know? So this is a great time to do that. This is a time where you'll be getting more in touch with your physical body and tuning into symptoms. Symptoms are the language of the body. And whenever there's a symptom, if we try to just dismiss it or squash it, the body is yelling for help and it will tend to yell louder if we squash its cries. So this is a new chance for you to really see your body's symptoms as your body's language. Everything has a language, animals, plants, you know, it's different than other languages and it's not, you know, exactly comparable apples to apples, but your body has a language and this is a time where you can learn that language and you can really make very, very um, dramatic leaps forward on account of this. And this is one of the areas where you can smash limits. If you have been an emotional eater, if you have, um, you know, had uh, digestive or other issues, Mars here can help you to unwind all of this. It can also help you use your energy much more efficiently, where you can get a lot more done in a shorter amount of time, really streamline your efforts. Okay, so the next layer of smashing limits, we'll just go right here to Jupiter. Jupiter is the, like, official smasher of limits because it's the great expander and it has been moving through your 12th house since May of 2024. It will be there through June of 2025. And so that's a long transit. And what it's doing here is it's trying to, I mean, really the big mission of what you have in that time is to learn the difference between your fears and your intuition. And this is a human thing. This is something that, you know, we all have the opportunity to develop. But because cancers are so sensitive and sometimes, you know, get nervous and anxious about stuff, um, you know, 90%, what was that? I'm trying to remember who said that 90% of what we worry about never, never even happens. Um, and that's actually true. So this is a time where Jupiter can help you to free yourself from those patterns because worry is actually an addiction. There is a neuro chemical cascade that occurs with worry and with you know anxiety that begets more of it and when you find that you have nothing to worry about you may find that you create something to worry about and you're like who me <laughs> but I know you're doing it so anyway and it's not just cancers you know like I said this is a human thing but because of your sensitivities sometimes you know things are bumping around in your field more and it's harder to dispel it so Jupiter is helping you to smash limits with the problems between telling the difference between your intuition and fear. And it's also helping you to smash limits as far as how far you can travel uh, from this plane while being in your body, you know? So basically meditation and connection to the divine and going to the past to heal ancestral karma and, you know, looking into the future to see the things that you need to know in order to make your best decisions now. So you get to smash limits in those areas, which is really exciting. Okay, so now let's talk about the eclipses. I'm just going to touch on the October 2nd eclipse at 10 degrees of Libra because it's not happening this month, but we do have to mention it because all eclipse energies are very strong at least four to six weeks before they happen. So we are in a chance for manifestation from that Libra eclipse. And we'll talk about that more in the October report, but for now, know that new relationships, new chapters, new energy is, you know, coming in. And for cancers specifically, that is back in your home and family where they, all that other Libra energy is. So some new level of relationship or new chapter of relationship or new addition to the family. Many of you may become pregnant or adopt a, a baby or have a new roommate or, you know, have, your your new partner uh, move in with you or vice versa you know there's some new clean slate that's going on in your home space from that and you may see those that information come in very soon 
it might come in in September, even before the eclipse. Now the big showstopper is the Pisces lunar eclipse at 25 degrees on September 17th. Okay, so I'll give you the exact date, but again, you know, into July, August for sure, September, October, drizzling into November, we're in eclipse season. So manifestations from these eclipses can happen at any time. And exciting news about this, quite a few exciting things. One is that this is a new polarity that's being added to the already established polarity of Aries Libra that has been in process. Oh, and by the way, that Air, that um, Aries Libra eclipse cycle is affecting your home and work. So from 2023 to 2025, you're very likely seeing a lot of changes either within your job structure, within your job activities at your job, or changes with your job, you know, major changes. And this is also the mother-father polarity and you as a mother or father. So all of that is very present at this time for sure. Now, in addition to that, because that's rolling through into 2025, we now have a Pisces Virgo eclipse cycle, and this is going into 2027. So we already talked at length about a lot of this Virgo energy, so that's happening in the short term. But the axis that's being worked here with the eclipse that's happening at this time, and that will be happening over the next couple of years, is makes all of this energy very long term. And fortunately for Cancers, this new eclipse cycle is in a beautiful angle for you. So I talked about the nice angle that Virgo makes um, and the Pisces energy makes an even better angle, the trine, most favorable in all in, astro- of all in astrology, in all of astrology. <laughs> so this ninth house is where the eclipse is happening. It's happening in the best possible angle for Cancer and it's happening in the ninth house, which is ruled by Jupiter, which is the shatterer of limits, which is opening up a cycle of shattering limits over the next years. And you are in a hot spot right now. So that's really exciting. Now I'm going to give you some specifics about how this can manifest. I also wanna let you know that if you're closer to the 25 degree range, you may this may be more obvious, but don't worry if you're not. Nobody's being left out of this and you may have other placements in your chart that you don't even know about that could be close to 25 degrees if you're not familiar with your chart. Um, and this is available for everybody. Sometimes the people who are closer to an exact hit will notice it more, but sometimes if you're not noticing it more, it's still going on, it's just happening unconsciously and it will start to show itself over time. Like maybe it will be less obvious, uh, you know, but maybe it won't be because everything is really just up for however it's supposed to manifest. So the dates of that would be, we'll say 20 degrees through the rest of the sign. So that's going to be like July 10th through the rest of the sign and the closer you are to around July 15th, July 16th, the more of a direct kiss that you get from that. All right, so let's talk about what types of additional limits can be smashed with this new cycle. Okay, so first and foremost, travel and adventure. Eclipses that happen in the ninth house are often signal opportunities for travel. So all of a sudden, bam, you're going to a different country, life dream, bucket list thing happening. If you are trying to do something with immigration, this is one of the best possible things that could happen to support that. And you know, anything having to do with adventures that broaden your horizons and shatter limits in any area of your life, because that is what Jupiter is about. Jupiter is the big gas giant that just goes as far and wide as possible. New cultural experiences, expansion for international business, for your business being inter- becoming international or your work becoming international. Educational pursuits are a very big thing. You may decide you want to go back to school if you are older or if you are younger, you may be starting your educational journey. You may be getting ready to teach or seeing yourself as a teacher or take on a teaching or mentor role, even with some organization like Big Brothers Big Sisters or whether it's in your work establishment, you might be taking on some mentees and that could feel really, really good and really fulfilling and open up a new period of time where this feels, you know, feels like the good direction for you. This has to do with expanding your knowledge and your understanding of the world and the things beyond this world. This can correlate correlate with spiritual awakening. Pisces is a very, very spiritual sign and it's the connection of the all that is where we're all the same. So an eclipse in this area can definitely trigger profound spiritual awakening. And you might find yourself asking different questions than you did before and attracting to you people who are interested in these kind of things where you're building your soul family, finding your soul family. 
you know, your inner self is speaking, your inner child is speaking, you're seeking deeper meaning and connection. And all of this can have to do with your place out in the world and your purpose and what it is that you're doing here. You can have random philosophical insights, you know, anything having to do with spiritual practices and belief systems. And this can all lead to major personal growth and a broader worldview, which can be very clearing to any kind of karmic congestion um, that happened before. So the teaching roles can be in the community, it can be online, it can be a formal teacher or informal. Publishing and writing is a strongly highlighted um, section here. Legal matters, strategic planning, you know, anything like that. Setting long-term goals, and I gave you those dates, September 12th through October 7th. It might be good to do some brainstorming and getting down of, of some plans there. Definitely be open to travel. If you are listening to this early and you need to get things worked out with your passport, you might want to have it situated in case an opportunity comes. To launch something like a book, those dates, the 12, you know, September 12th, October 7th, are also fantastic for things like that. When you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and put your name and email address in there, you get a welcome letter. And one of the perks, many, many, many perks that you'll see in the welcome letter is my Eclipse resource page. So if you want to learn more about um, ninth house eclipses, more about Pisces eclipses, more about Libra eclipses, more about fourth house eclipses. I have a resource page where you can go deep into these and I have corresponding videos and they'll tell you, you know, which ones for you to use for your different placements. I'm giving you some important dates to look at, but that newsletter um, group also receives my September 2024 archived letter because I've already sent that out, but you can. Um, when you get the welcome letter, there's an archive link and you can just put September 2024 in the search bar at the archive link and you can get my write-up with all the sweet and salty dates for the month and um, you know some other very important things to know about the cycles going on. Okay, so remember to subscribe, like, click the bell, and enable notifications to make sure that my reports get delivered right to where you can get them as soon as possible. If you want them even earlier, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. Another perk you get when you join my free VIP community is you get access to my horoscope, my public horoscopes early. Okay, so just put your name and email address in here. Click receive, look for my welcome letter in the inbox. Once you get it, you'll get the Eclipse resource page link. Uh, you'll get the health tips link. You'll get my 28 day virtual coaching program. You'll get you can um, search for the September 2024 in the archive link to get the sweet and salty aspect dates. You can get my train your brain audio, all of these goodies. And you will get mini astrology lessons as well. Now, if you want a more organized, structured learning of astrology, I am your girl. I've been an astrology teacher for decades. I've brought people, many, many people to being able to earn money from their love of astrology. So if you scroll down and you click on up level, then, you can see my courses, my Astrology Basics and Beyond course, or my Become a Professional Astrologer Master Certification course. And if you're listening to this anytime through the end of August, you will get $1,100 worth of free courses when you enroll in this course now. So you can see that there, or you can go to beastropro.com. I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye.